Hello folks, what we're going to do here is review historic windows and how to do operational weatherization service on, on your historic windows. There's nothing difficult about it. It's uh, easily done. If, if you can operate a screwdriver and a hammer without breaking your fingers, you can do it. Uh, first thing we want to do here is kind of review some historic windows, why we save our historic windows in our homes. In historic homes, the windows are actually a design element of that piece of property. There's no modern window that you can put in there that is going to match the historic elements of those windows. Now, historic windows are, are made with a type of material that we don't have anymore. It's an old growth lumber. And what we can see is with the lumber is that the old growth lumber, which what that means is that the trees were grown naturally in the wild. And you can see the growth rings are very tight. Now this is a piece of modern lumber. We can see how wide those growth rings are. Why that's important is that the old growth lumber is a lot more dimensionally stable. Bugs don't like it as well because it's harder, it holds paint better, and it lasts significantly longer. The new material is tree farm grown. Now the way that these guys are made, they are assembled with a mortise and tenon connection. And what that means is, that would be the tendon. This guy on the end there, and then it fits into a slot. That's how this thing is put together. So it's not on all four sides in that same manner. Now with historic windows, what happens is they are designed to be repaired. So for instance, this is what we call a bottom rail. So this is the horizontal part that's all the way down at the bottom. Oftentimes what happens is if we're seeing, seeing some deterioration in this guy, this thing might be rotted as, as a result of some glazing failure or, or what have you that caused that to happen. Well, you can replace this individual piece without replacing this piece. And, and, and the way that that is done is if you look closely at this, this is called the style, the vertical pieces are styles. You can see these two little holes right here. What's in there, these windows are put together with either wooden pegs or pins. But these would be the pins and these would be the wood pegs. Well, you can take those out of there. If you kind of house that around that a little bit where you can get a hold of it with a pair of needle nose or a vice grip, you can withdraw that pin. The same with the pegs, you can get those guys out of there. You can use a, uh, a center puncher or something and punch them from the backside and knock the pegs out. Once you've done that, this guy comes apart. There's no glue in these things. Now modern windows are not made that way. They're made with glue and staples. They don't come apart. You got to cut them apart. And they're just not designed to be repaired. They're designed to be replaced instead. So that's why with historic windows, don't discount it because it may have a separation. So what we're going to look for when we look at the window is we're going to look, some sep look for some separation at these joints. It can be here or it could be at the top part, uh, across here at the mid rail or the check rail. So we're looking for separation there. And, and what happens is that if the glazing has gone bad on the outside of the window here, water gets into that connection. Once it gets in there, if it's got the steel pins in it, it's rust. They start to rust. And just like anything that starts to rust, the first thing it does is expand as it rusts, and then it turns to powder as it fails over time. It's not uncommon to see a window that's very deteriorated. If you look at your windows and, you know, basically they look kind of ratty on the outside like this does, but the joints are tight. The wood still feels sound, and you can, you can peck on it with a hammer, or you can use a pen or a pencil or anything. You can tell. You can tell if it's got rot. I tell people how to evaluate their windows over the phone all the time. You know, it's not rocket science. You look at it. If it looks rotted, it is. If the joints are tight, it's okay. You just may need some routine maintenance and not replacement. I want to talk about the assembly of the windows and what kind of things you might run into. This, this would be a side piece a side piece of the frame. So that is this area here is what this guy would be. There's different ways that the windows are put together. 
There's different types of existing all weather strips. So, and, and the reason I'm bringing the point of this is to point out the things you might run into when you get ready to start doing your windows. So let's jump to the point. We're going to say that, okay, we've looked at our windows. They look pretty decent. All we've got is broken ropes. We've got a bunch of caulking and paint where we don't want it. I can't open and close my windows. I want to be able to open and close my windows. So we're going to figure out how we're going to be able to do that. And in order to do that, we've got to know different things that are going on within the window assembly itself so that we know how to take it apart. So you may see something like this. This, this material here might be in there. And what that is, if you look at this, like so, that, how that would be in there, that piece of weather stripping material there, which looks like this when we take it out, rides in this little groove like that. And the window goes up and down on it. Clearly, you can't get this window out of here unless you figure out how you're going to address this piece of, this piece of metal that might be in here. This, this, this is an old type of weather stripping. It's still available. I don't use it. A uh, hundred years ago, it was, as, it was as good as they had but we have some better stuff today that doesn't actually take away from the historic appearance of the window. What we want to do is, if we run into this, we've got to know how to get our window apart. So the next phase of this thing is, is getting into this thing and take it, take it out. So if you're looking at the side, you're probably seeing some ropes that are here. They might be broken. There's just a piece dangling down like that. Uh, rather than being up through there and the windows don't go up and down because they've been painted shut, nailed shut. No telling what all Skippy did before you got there to the point where you're going to try to service these windows. So you got to be prepared for anything. What happens to this material, this, and this is sash cord, it looks like, it uh, might look like clothesline, but it's not a clothesline. It's a different material altogether. It's sash cord. What happens with sash cord is that it's very durable. It lasts a long, long time. It's not uncommon to find it on the top sash that nobody ever opened, still connected on a hundred year old house. But on the bottom sash, many, many times it's broken. And the reason that it breaks is, is twofold. It's affected by the sun UV rays, and it's also affected by paint. Now I got a little piece over here of sash cord that we took out of a house yesterday. And when this guy is in here and Mr. Painter comes along and he's painting the windows, he's not the least bit fussy about getting paint on this thing. And you can see it, it gets stiff and brittle. The paint gets into those fibers of the rope and it causes the rope to break. So the rope is passing over the top of the pulley up here like so, all of a sudden it's gotten real stiff. You get the window up and down a couple of times, it snaps in two, boom. You got a broken rope. So that's what affects the rope. When we do Operation Weatherization Service, we go back with chain. We use a number eight chain. This isn't a job you want to have to revisit every two or three years. Put the chain on it. The worst thing that happens to the chain is if you're a sloppy painter, it's going to look ornery but it's not gonna break like the rope does. So that's why we go back with the chain. Uh, the reason we use the chain is it doesn't break. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do an evaluation of our window as far as preparing to disassemble it. So when you look at your window, and this, this one here, because it's a mock-up window that's, that's used for demonstration, is probably not going to be exactly like what you got at the house as far as this one actually does work. And you may well have none in the house that do work. However, we can get to that point. So when we look at it, what we want to do is, we, we already know, we, need, we, we want to get the sashes out. In order to get the sashes out, We've got, we've got to do a few things. The first thing we have to do is these vertical strips right here, which are called the stop strips, they hold the bottom window in. Now, when you look at yours in the house, they are probably painted and cocked pretty tightly. 
you're going to have to mess up some paint. You don't have any choice. So if you take a chisel and cut down through these sides on both sides and do that first, and then these little small trim wrecking bars are, are really good for this kind of work. If you go on and get started here and get you in there a little bit and then start prying it like so. These things are very often a very tight fit, so and, and we run into a lot of them that are broken. If you start in the center prying rather than at the top or the bottom, you essentially take that piece of wood and make it shorter because you've now turned it into you know, sort of a half moon rather than just a straight stick. So it, it shrinks it up a little bit to make it a little easier so that you can pop it out of there. So you're going to pop those guys out one on each side. See how easy I did that? You're not going to have that kind of look. You're going to take them out, take the nails out of them because we're going to put them back on again. You can see that the way that these stop strips were made, it's got a little reveal in it right there. And that is in there to make it easier for you to get this off of there. What's happened more often than not is that Mr. Painter came along and he ran a beat of caulking down there and he filled that sucker full. And that's what makes it more difficult. If he left the stinking thing alone and just painted it rather than caulked it, these can come off pretty easily. So once we got those off of there, we're gonna look at our window. And there's a couple of different, now the balance system we can see this one here has got the weights on the back of it. And most of the time, that's what you're going to see in your house. If you raise the window up and down, you might hear them clanging around back in the wall there if you can get your, get your windows to open. But that's a very, very common system. It's, a, it's pretty much a no-brainer. You've got a window here that weighs, let's say, 15 pounds. You've got a couple of 7-pound weights on either side to counterbalance it. That's what we're trying to do because when we want it to stop in some position as we raise it up and down and the weights allow us to do a very, very simple system. Another type that you might run into, it's not uncommon, this is a tape balance. So this actually mounts where the pulleys go. So in lieu of the pulleys, you're going to see this guy in there. And this thing works just like your measuring tape. It's real simple. That's how it works. So it comes down and fastens on the windows. These come in all different sizes so that they can uh, accommodate different weights of the windows. So you might see this guy on here. Uh, it's, it's a little more of an aggravation to, uh, to get the window out, but it's still doable. These things here, they still make them today. You can still get them. They are, uh, the biggest thing that happens to them is that they never get any maintenance, which requires, it's got a clock spring in there. It's got to squirt a little oil on it once in a while. Nobody does it. Just, it, it but if you, you know, give it a little bath, if they're sticky and they don't want to work, you might try just squirting a little oil in there first and see if you can get that thing to go up and down. But worst case scenario, you can replace them. Okay, so we've got those guys off of there. Our ropes that you're probably going to see rather than the chains are still connected. Uh, so now that we see that we've got that still going on there, and we're going to assume that they're still connected here, we're going to try to get this bottom window to open. So we're going to open the sash lock. The sash lock is an important component, by the way. The sash lock's got nothing to do with keeping crooks out. Crooks just break the glass. They don't care about your stupid lock. The sash lock is there to pull the top and bottom together for the air seal at that point. So many houses you go into, they got these sash locks on the first floor. They don't have them upstairs. They well, you know, crooks can't get up there. That's not why it's there. It's there for a purpose for the weatherization. So it's important to be sure that that guy is working right. So anyway, you're going to open your sash lock. And you're, and you're going to try to raise your window, even though you got your stops off, and probably nothing's going to happen because it's been painted tight on the other side as well. So you got to do a little finagling here. Uh, a lot of times you can take your little, your little pinch bar here, and you can kind of work it side to side a little bit to break that paint bead. Uh, you can do a little bit up here at the top to kind of pull it out a little bit to break that paint bead. Worst comes to worst, if, if none of that's working for you, you're going to have to go outside. 
take your chisel and cut all the way around that. This is a very labor-intensive part. It's, a, it's monkey work. It's not difficult by any means, but you, you, you've got to do it. That daggone paint bridged around there will hang you and won't let you get the window up. So what we're going to say is that uh, we did our thing and we got it all broken loose where we can raise it up. So the, what we want to do is determine if we have a weather strip situation going on. So if we see this stuff in here, like we had on our little side frame there, for an old weather stripping system, we've got to get this stuff off of here. So what we're going to do is it's going to be fastened. You can see these little holes up here. So it's nailed on there. So you got to get those nails out of there because this piece of metal has got to come out with the window. If it doesn't, you're going to break the window. So if we look at this, this piece here that had the slot in it, that this rolled in, we can see that's very, very skinny. Real easy to bust that chunk of wood off of there. And you want to avoid that at all costs. So that's why when it comes out on the side, the whole side has to come out together with that in there. So you got to raise the window up a little bit find the nails that are down here on the bottom and get those guys out as well as at the top there are going to be some nails up there at the top and there might be one in the middle too that's not uncommon if there's one in the middle you've got to fight this window the bottom window to get it up so you can get at that window uh, where, where that nail is to get it out of there but you got to get it out somehow in order to do that again there's no good method there. You just got to kind of play it by ear, but get that thing out of there. If you run into this stuff, you're not going to be happy because usually it's all painted. You can't even see the nails. You got to start pecking around to find out where they are, but you got to get them out. We're going to say we got our weather strip out if it was there. And once we did that, we could drift the window out. So it's going to come out of the hole. We're going to look on the side. We're going to see our rope coming up across there once we pull the sides out and it's going to have a knot that's back in this little knot hole in there so what we're going to once we get that out so what we're going to do is we're going to pull the window out and uh, we don't want to lose that weight down in the wall so this is a cavity back here you can't see what's going on back here that's down in the wall cavity if you just snip this rope and let that weight fall, what can happen is down here at the base, that weight can go right through it. <clears throat> and it might end up in the basement before it stops. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to drop the weights, especially on a big window. I mean, you can have weights, you know, some big honking weights like this. You know, these guys are probably 15, 18 pounds. That's a pretty big missile. I can go down through there and break that bottom of your window frame and cause you all kinds of problems you don't want. So don't drop it. So you're going to cut the rope here holding on to this and you're going to tie a knot in it. Just a, just, just a little half knot. Something like that. And then you're going to let it come down and that knot's going to keep that from banging all the way down and going out through the bottom or getting down there and getting wedged in the hole, which makes it difficult to get out of there. So you're going to do that. And you're going to do that on both sides. And once you've done that, you'll be able to get this window out of here. We got our ropes cut, or in this case, we got our chains unscrewed. And now we got our bottom window out. And we're going to take our bottom window and we're going to flip it around so we can get a pretty good look at it. And, and look at a couple of things. We're going to want to look at our glazing. This is the putty. We're going to want to, if, if we've got bad places in it, then we're going to want to chip those out and patch that while it's nice and easy to get at instead of dangling up on top of an extension ladder. Any of that putty that's in there, it's still good and sound, leave it there. You just want to patch in between where it's, it's not in a good condition anymore. It's also important to remember that that putty, that glazing needs to be painted. If it's not painted, it'll turn black and draw mold, and it will also uh, cause it to fail a lot quicker. So you want to get some paint on it. Now, the thing is, you can't paint it right away. The, the, the glazing has to skin over a little bit. 
usually takes two or three days for that to happen, and then you can paint it. Okay, so we got our bottom window out. We're going to set him off to the side. And the next thing we got to do is get our top window out. In order to get the top window out, we have got to get this piece of wood here on either side, which is called a parting stop or a parting beat. That's got to come out of there. That's what holds this thing in here. Now, the way that these parting stops are designed to come out is you push this window down. Once it's down all the way, you can see how that rides over this part of the window. It's in a little notch right there. Then you can drift this guy out of here and get it out of there. Sit in the print like that. There's that notch right there. Okay. Now you're going to say that's really fine and dandy, but how am I supposed to get the stinking window down? It hadn't been down since Teddy Roosevelt was president, and it's not budging. Well, we replace these. We don't try to save them because you can't get them out. When the window is up, like we said, when it was up all the way, we can't get this stick out of here because it's hung locked in behind that little notch. So we just break these things out of here. It's nothing magic. It's just a stick. It's a rectangle. 99% of the times it's 7 16 wide by 7 8 this way. It's easier just to replace the thing. So just, just break it on out of there. Once you've got it out of there on both sides, and I don't want to break mine because I'm going to put them back in, but I'm going to tell you that we're going to break them. Because these things are going to be, they're going to be cocked, they're going to be painted, they're going to be a disaster to try to get it out of their one piece. Uh, they're just, and they always are. They don't need a million nails in them, but everybody thinks more is better, so they might have a million nails in them. And caulking, 15 tubes of caulk on them and painting everything else. So we just break them out of there. Once you broke those guys out of there, then you can see this window would come out. But if you got this kind of weather strip again, the reason I keep bringing this back up is you can really damage the window. If you've got this kind of stuff in here, just like on the bottom, you got to get it out of, loose in order to get it out. So it's, you can see where this notch is in here. This came off the top because it has to notch around that pulley up there. So in order to get this out, This window was still up and closed. All right, well, if it was still up, okay. And this guy was in here, he would be sticking out down here a couple inches below the window. And there's gonna be a couple of nails down here at the bottom. So we're gonna kind of peck around there and get the paint off of them and find those nails and get those nails out of there. If we don't get those out of there, when we finally do get the window to come down, we can't pull this out or take it out because it's still got the nails in it, which means you've got to fight it all the way back closed again in order to get at those two stinking nails. And you're going to be learning, remembering all kinds of new cuss words you haven't thought of in a long time. So catch those two nails first. Once you've done that, then you want to move your effort to getting the window down. And like the bottom, you know, you're going to pry on it. You're going to do this, that, and the other thing in order to whatever it takes in order to get this sash to come down. Once it's down, you can see uh, it's going to have a couple of nails like that up in the top. It may have one or two down here through the middle somewhere you've got to fight with. You've got to get them all out of there. And then you can pull this piece of weather strip out of here. You don't necessarily have to do both sides, but you've got to get one side so that you can twist this thing out. And then you could pull it off the one on that side. Then you've got plenty of room to get at this guy to get him out of there. Hopefully that the first couple of windows that you do, you don't find that stuff because that's a hard way to start because it's ugly. But most of the windows, uh, I'd say probably 50% don't have that stuff on them. Uh, but it's, uh, if it's there, then you're going to battle with it. So once we get it down, we've got the same thing going on that we had up top. I mean, with the bottom window. So we're going to have to, again, we're going to want to tie our ropes off. And, uh, and keep from dropping the weights. Now, in the interest of saving some time here, 
I'm just going to put that back there and you can envision that I got it out here and we're doing the same thing. We're looking at the glazing and, and this, that, and the other thing. Once we're to that point and these guys are tied off and the weights are up here at the top with the knots on them, we, we want to get the weights out and let this down. So on the side of the frame, and I can show you on this one here, it might be a little easier for the camera to see, you can see this access panel. And that access panel is completely hid when, when the window is, is in the hole. Its purpose is to come out of there to get the weights out. So you got to get that panel out. And it could be secured any number of ways. It, it might have bevels on both ends of it. It might have a, a little screw in it or a nail in it. Uh, it might be sort of a, a half lap connection that, uh, that, that's in there. But Whatever it is, you got to figure it out and get it out of there and get it out of your way so that uh, you can get out the weight. So once you've opened that little door, there's going to be one on both sides. You're going to take your, uh, uh, your rope that you got up here and you're going to untie your knot and you're going to let that come down slowly while you've got your hand under here to catch the weight and you're going to pull the weight out. So once we've got our weight out of the hole, we're going to look at it. It can be secured any number of ways. Uh, this is a common method here. It's just got a, a simple knot in the end of it and it's holding it up like that. Sometimes it'll be tied in sort of a little half hitch looking thing like this. Sometimes it'll have 8,000 knots in it because the guy thought he was doing the best and he just put a lot of knots in it. But whatever it is, you're going to cut it and, and get it out of there so that you can reconnect again with your new materials that you're going to go back in with. So we're going to get all four weights out of there and we're going to notice that the, the weights on the top window are often a little bit heavier than the ones for the bottom window, maybe about a pound. On the weights themselves, and this one probably make a liar out of me, no it doesn't, uh, it, you see that's marked with an 8. I don't know if you can see that or not. That's a weight, so this is an 8-pound weight. Oftentimes they'll be marked on the side with Roman numerals. But they're, uh, most of the time, not 100% of the time, but most of the time the weights are marked to let you know how much they weigh. So you might see, you know, it's an 8-pound, you might see an 8-pound weight on the bottom sash, you might see a 9-pound weight on the top sash. And the reason for that is, is gravity, no-brainer. They want the top window to stay up there all the time, so they put them a little bit heavier that way. So pay attention to that. Oftentimes the weights for the bottom window are longer than they are for the top windows. Uh, and, and that's because when the top window raises up and this guy comes down, it doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't ground down here because it doesn't go up like that. Whereas the top window, you can see when it comes up to its closed position, that weight is going down. So if it's a real long weight, it might ground and hit in st before the window gets shut. So that's why you might see the weights on the bottom window might be a little bit longer than they are on the top window. So when you take them out, the point is to just pay attention which ones were on the top and which ones were on the bottom. So you put them back the same way so you don't have to do it twice. Okay, so once we've got them out, both sashes out, what we want to do is we want to take, a, and this, this tool works pretty well, this is a carbide scraper. You know, you can buy them at any big box store, no big deal. And you want to, you're going to want to go around this edge on the outside for the top window to clean that paint off of there that was bridging between the top and the bottom window, preventing it from coming down. You're also going to do the same thing to the window sash. So if we're looking at our sash, once we took it out, we're very likely again to see that same bridging built up on the side. So we're going to take our scraper and we're going to get that stuff off of there. Because what we're trying to do is to make this window go up and down when we get finished. So once we've done that, we feel good about that. We're going to vacuum it all up. And remember that you're probably dealing with lead paint here. So take the necessary precautions. You use a vacuum that's got a HEPA filter in it for sucking it up. You know, wear a dust mask uh, if that's required. Think about washing your hands, that kind of stuff. Don't be eating too much lead. It's not good for you. Okay, 
So once we've got it all cleaned up, what we want to do is add some weather stripping to this thing. Believe it or not, and, and I tell people, I say, I'm just a messenger here. But if you take a historic window and you weather strip it in this manner, and you put a quality storm window on it, that energy efficiency is as good as any modern window. And that has been corroborated by the Department of Interior. You can go on their website. They've done all kinds of testing to prove it. So don't believe the hype that you might hear from the replacement window industry that these windows are no good. It's not the case. You do it properly, they're going to be just every bit as energy efficient as any modern window made today. Okay? So what we want to do is we want to add some weather strip to this window. So on the top window, we're going to add a piece. This is leaf bronze. It's the same kind of stuff you might find on your door. Looks like this, comes in a roll. We're going to add a piece on the bottom of the bottom window and on the top of the top window. Now we're pretty anal here, so we just lay them out so the nails are nice, evenly spaced. It's, it's, it's an aesthetic thing. It's not really that important, but we like to space them out so they look pretty. We put them on about two inch centers. It makes a good solid connection there. If you have this kind of material that we talked about earlier that rides in the slot, on the top of your top window and on the bottom of the bottom window, they're going to have that same slot. Very, very common what happens is that that slot in the top window gets all full of dirt. The top window doesn't close all the way. Same thing happens at the bottom. It gets bent or it gets a blob full of a bunch of paint. The bottom window won't go down all the way. If we put this kind of stuff on here and take that off, what we've got going on here is a, essentially a maintenance-free situation. Nothing's going to mess with it. So that's why we put this on and remove that material there. We, we eliminate that problem of the dirt and the paint. The next thing we want to do is to string our weights. Now, if you're using the chain like, like, like we like to use, but it's the same thing with the rope, what you got to do is you, uh, you pull the weight out through the hole. So envision that I had my, my chain. And the chain, you can buy the chain. You can buy it in a 100-foot roll. Like this, this is the way I buy it, you can see. It comes with spirals, which are these gizmo, which I'll show you how they work. And it also comes with chain hooks if you prefer chain. I, I, I like chain hooks better than spirals, but you can, you can use, that's, that's the way we, that we use these guys. So you would take your chain or your rope, either one if it was in a coil. So we're going to feed it up through here on our out of our box, and we're going to take it down through there. We're going to pull it out through our access hole over here, and then we're going to take our weight, which we got sitting over here in our window frame. We got our chain coming out. We're going to loop it through there, and we're going to attach it. And we're going to attach it with a chain hook. And because this, this chain looks like this, when you feed it through, you want the little loopy end, not the flat end. You want the little loopy end to be coming out through the hole so you can put it through the weight like that. And then you're going to chain, take your chain hook with this little gizmo here and you put that on there like that and you're going to pinch it with your pliers and then you're going to take the other end of it. This is coming out through the hole and you're going to put that through like that and you're going to pinch that with your pliers so that it looks like this. So essentially you have choked it, you didn't crimp it, you don't want to take that top and like stick it through one of these holes, you want it to go on there like that. So that's how you do that, that's how you make that connection. So again, remember that happened out through this hole. Once you've done that, then you're going to pull the weight up, like we did here, on this side. So we're going to pull the weight up to the top, we can tell when it gets there. We can hear that, even though we can't see it. We can tell it's up there. And we're going to take a nail, because that works pretty good, and we're going to stick it through the hole. To determine how long we want to chop this guy off, and this works the same for rope, we want to take the height of the bottom sash here, and we're going to say that that is 24 inches. 
when we want the window all the way down closed, like so, we want to have this, this guy up here at the top so that when it raises up, it doesn't ground down there. So what I've, what I've found over the years that uh, if you allow about two and a half inches, it works out pretty good. So that's a 24 inch sash. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my tape down here and I'm gonna come up to 27 and a half inches, 28, it's not rocket science. And I'm gonna take a Sharpie, which works really good. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint that link right there at that point. I'm gonna paint it black so I can find it. What that's gonna do for me is tell me what I want when I connect this thing. And now what I need to do is get a, figure out how long I need in order to secure my chain in the side. So what I'm gonna do there is uh, if I'm using a spiral, if you buy this kit or a kit like it, or if you like spirals, you gotta allow enough so that the spiral can go in the knot hole down here. So you gotta take this measurement from here down to there and with the spiral on it in order to be able to do that. This is how the spiral attaches. You can see it's just like, a, like doing a, a key ring kind of a thing. It goes into the middle and uh, you, that drops into the knot hole right there, like so. And then this comes up and psh, 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 all the way around through the top. You can see how it goes with the spirals. We don't use the spirals, nothing wrong with them. They're just a little bit uh, awkward to use. So we use a screw is what we put in them. So essentially we're gonna basically take a screw you know, just a, this is a number six by three quarter screw. And the reason we use a number six is because it fits through the chain easily. Nice and easy. And we're gonna attach it like that. So we're gonna take that up there. We're gonna take our mark that we put on the window, which was that black mark right there. And we're going we're gonna to bury that mark because we don't want to see it. So we're going to put it right at the top of the window. We're not going to let it stick up. We're going to put it at the top of the window. And we're going to let our chain come down. And we're going to take our drill. And we're going to put the screw in it right there. Do that on both sides. What you need to do from your mark is measure down about 8 inches. You want to get down far enough that when that window goes up, that it clears. It, it doesn't interfere with the pulley. So if the, if the chain was cut too short, then you, know, you might run into your fastener before it can get up there because it's trying to ride over the top of the pulley. So you want to be down here someplace with it. That's why you allow seven and a half, eight inches works pretty good. Get you down low enough in order to do that. So once we've got our chains cut where we want them, the next thing we want to do is to add a weather stripping on the side of our frame because we took that stuff off. So what we'd like to use like we were saying earlier, is this material here, this, this is a V bronze, it secures in here, and here, and here, and here, around all four sides. This piece is just off of here because it's, it's hard to get the window out within, I, for a demonstration window, I just leave it off, but there would be another piece in there. So you put that stuff up here in the top, and you have to, uh, notch it out around the pulleys. If you can see that, it's notched out around those top pulleys. What you want to do is, is put this as close to the, the parting bead as you can, the parting stop, so it rides right next to that gap. And that's where you secure it on the top window. Uh, the same thing happens on the bottom window. You put it right at the edge of that parting bead. If you have this situation going on, whichever one it was, it had the slot in it. You may have to adjust that location because you don't want the, this part here, you want it to be riding on here. You don't want it to be riding down where that slot was. So you may have to change that location a little bit if you run into this situation. <clears throat> okay. So once we got that on there, now we can put our top window back in. 
So we would we would fasten it off. We would screw it back in there, and we would have our window down in this position like that. We can put our parting beads in. So we're going to get our length on our parting beads. So we're going to measure from the top. You don't need to take the top one out. There's actually one up here at the top as well. It can stay. It doesn't need to go anywhere. So you get a measurement from that guy down to the sill, the slopey sill in the slot, and that's how long you cut these guys off. And because the window's down, you can get that in there because now you can put it in the slot and drift it back in the hole. I'm ready. Like that. This thing does not need a thousand nails in it like you took out of the one you ended up making splinters out of. Three nails is plenty. One at the top, one here about in the middle somewhere, and then one down here at the bottom. At this point for the top window, you haven't got the weights on it yet for the bottom window, don't nail the bottom of it. And the reason you don't want to nail the bottom of it is this, this access door here has a slot in it that kind of rides in the middle of this slot. So what you're going to have to do is pull this parting stop out a little bit in order to get that cover to go back in there. If you nail the bottom, you're going to have yourself a hassle. So don't do that. Say, don't put that last nail in the bottom until you put this cover back in here. So then we're going to put our one on the other side. Like that. And we're going to take them, we want to pry our weather strip up. So we're going to just bend it up because we want that guy to seal tight against the top. And then we should be able to raise our window up. Like that. Up into the hole. The reason for double hung windows, most historic homes have high ceilings. When these houses were built, they didn't have central air conditioning. How, this is how they air condition the house. So it's important that top window can still go up and down. The way that that works is what they call convective ventilation. You take uh, in the cool of the morning or the cool of the evening, you open this top window down, you raise this guy up, and what happens is that hot air that's, that's up there on the ceiling, it goes out. Cool air comes in the bottom, cools the house down. As the day begins to heat up, you shut the windows. Historic homes generally have a lot of mass. They have thick walls and plaster and all that business going on. The house would stay cool for the biggest part of the day. That's why historic windows were double hung in most cases. You'll find a single hung once in a while. Single hung means that this one does not go down, but most of them are going to be double hung. So that's what you got going on there. So you want, that's why we want this window to work. It's really nice to be able to let that cool air into the house, have a nice fresh smell during the day, and then close them up. So that's why I want to do that. Okay, so now we got our, our top window back in. We're going to, at that point, then add our weather, uh, and we're going to do our top, our bottom weights, which is the same way we just showed that. So we're going to stick that through there, do that, cut, cut our chain, you got all that kind of stuff. Then we're going to put the covers back on. And that's why we didn't want this guy, which I'll put in backwards, just give me a hard time. But that's, we wanted to be able to pull this out so that we could put that cover back in there because the way that it's made, it's got a slot in it that works to the center of that slot. So that's why we didn't nail the bottom of this parting stone. But now we've got our covers on, we're gonna nail that guy off down there at the bottom. And then we're gonna put our weather strip on, this stuff here. When we put this on, and the same is true for the top window, we're going to let it stick up a couple of inches, about two and a half inches up there, and then we're going to pin it at the top with a nail so that you don't cut your fingers on it. And the reason that we want it to stick up is that we want to be sure that there's still good contact with the window when the window is shut. If we had it down lower because of the the way that that's fastened, we're, we're going to lose some of that springy business going on there. So we go high enough so we're still springy down where the window sets. So we got that guy on there. We put our weather strip on our bottom. Then we're going to put it back in. And in the interest of saving some time here, and we got the window back in. We pressed it against our weather strip. We got it back in. So now what we want to do is we want to put our stop strips back on. 
don't necessarily go back in the same place they were when you took them off. A lot of times these things end up in the wrong place. When this window is closed, the gap between the stop strip and the side of the sash needs to about the, about the thickness of a credit card is a good gauge. That's how much spacing you want in there. A lot of times you'll see these way wide. They'll be way out here someplace, or they might be too tight. If you give it that gap about the thickness of a credit card, your window's gonna go up and down like you want it to, okay? Last piece of the puzzle is to be sure, be sure your sash lock is connected. There's a, a million different kind of sash locks. Uh, I would recommend not buying a $3 sash lock at the big box store. You know, spend a few extra bucks and buy a, a quality sash lock to put on there. And uh, that'll, that'll give you some good service over a long time. If you have existing sash locks that, that you just can't get them to work, most of the time they're covered with paint. Pe clean the paint off of them, squirt a little uh, uh, lubricating oil on them, and you can make them work again. Uh, so very, very often there's nothing wrong with them other than the fact they've just been globbed with a ton of paint. But you want to get that guy working. If you run into a situation where, for whatever reason, the top sash, the building may have shifted or something like that, and you end up with uh, where these two guys aren't coming together correctly, if it's a small amount, you can shim up underneath this back piece of it. If it's, if it's way off, you may have to trim the bottom of the bottom window or the top of the top window to get those to come together closer. Uh, in some situations, that's what's required, especially if the building has done some significant shifting, but you, you may have like a gap on one side and be tight on the other side because everything's way out of square. And that, that causes you to have to make those changes. So it's good to pay attention to that as you disassemble it, because that's going to, uh, you're going to want to do that cutting before you nail a weather strip on so you don't have to take the weather strip off and then put it back on again. So pay attention to it. And that's about all there is to it, folks. Uh, once you've done that, you're going to have a good window. Again, if you put a, a, a quality storm window on it, your energy efficiency is as good as it gets. I, I like to use a, a storm that has a full screen on the outside, just so when I'm taking advantage of that convection, I want to be able to not bring the bugs in the top or the bottom. A half screen won't allow you to do that, so that's, that's an option you might want to look at. So, okie dokie. Thank you for your time.